Prime Minister says engagement of foreign consultants will cease. Soldiers involved in the attack of students removed from the force. And suspect arrested with large quantity of marijuana in Kokopol. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening to you and welcome to Thursday's news. The government has decided to stop all foreigners from working in the country as advisors and consultants. By the end of this year, all existing arrangements with other countries will cease. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill made the announcement today when responding to questions in Parliament. He says this decision is to protect the country's secret information from being exploited by potential threats. The government is serious about saving the country from potential threats and the first step is to stop all foreigners coming in as advisers. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill told Parliament today when responding to questions raised by Kundiawa Gambok MP Tobias Kulang. The member wanted to know whether the country's National Intelligence Organization or NIO was functional. This is the national NIO Bluyumi or National Intelligence Organization Bluyumi, this country. Mr. Kulang questioned why every government department had an advisor and cautioned that there could be possible spies in the country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister said the government is working on revamping that organization after years of neglect. This is to ensure that uh, uh, we, we are not influenced by others, we are not influenced by outsiders in the work of uh, protecting our national interests into the future. Our government has taken a deliberate decision that by end of the year, all foreign consultants and advisors, uh, their contracts will end by 31st of December. He said there will be no more arrangements with other governments to have foreigners as advisors However, these people will be employed as public servants. It is important that we have uh, protection of our national interest and national security of our country. And collection of intelligence uh, information, intelligence is a, a very important part of that exercise. The Prime Minister said these arrangements have made Papua New Guineans lazy. Michelle Amba, National MTV News. In a bid to encourage ownership and participation, the government will introduce new laws for the media industry. The cross-ownership law and the core location laws are expected to be introduced in the November session. Communications Minister Jimmy Mirintoro said new players have entered the television market competing with nationally owned companies. A question was raised about the future of Kundu 2 TV now that the state has acquired MTV television station through Telecom PNG. It was during question time in Parliament today when the issue of media ownership was raised. South Fly MP Aide Ganasi questioned the government's future plans for Kundu 2 after acquiring MTV from Fiji TV. What plans am I got regarding the future of Kundu 2? Television Network, given the inclusion of MTV to the government's now portfolio of assets and investment, which means government now effectively owns and operates two commercial television stations. Communications Minister Jimmy Miring-Toro said both television stations are complementing each other and are functioning within the parameters of their respective acts. Because just looking at the purchase made by telecom, I believe it was a very good move because people of this country must also have their own commercial TV station. The minister informed Parliament that two important legislations will be brought to Parliament to control the degree of ownership. This means that the law will allow them to acquire a certain percentage of sales, either through their respective level of government or through normal business acquisition, as what Telecom has done. He criticized companies deviating from their initial business venture to move into the television industry, however failed to identify the companies by name. I see that we are losing very much in this very lucrative industry because we don't have some degree of ownership. He said existing laws also need to be tightened to give greater access to Papua New Guineans to take part in the ownership of media industry. 
Michelle Amba, National MTV News. Some missions are underway to protect and give local business owners in Papua New Guinea and give them an advantage over foreign investors. The small to medium enterprise policy that will be tabled in the next parliament sitting was formulated to prevent foreign investors doing businesses that could be done by locals. Trade, Commerce and Industry Minister Richard Maru said in Parliament yesterday that the SME policy was in Cabinet for over four months now and if passed will soon be used by the business communities. The tabling of such a policy will bring advantage to thousands of Papua New Guineans who have ventured into small businesses. It will determine the kinds of business activities that are only preserved for Papua New Guineans and will prevent foreign investors from entering into such business activities. So we have to reserve some of this business for our Papua New Guineans. In recent years, the increase in economic activities in provincial towns and cities has invited foreign investors to set up businesses like trade stores, kaibas or minimats within both provincial towns and along villages. In yesterday's parliament sitting, a concerned Usinobundi MP gave examples of trade stores being established by foreigners in villages in his electorate. Mr. Yagama said the site of foreign investors running businesses in his provincial capital Medang is not an encouraging site for locals and the sooner the policy is tabled it will help local business owners. In response Minister Maru said the drafted policy includes a comprehensive list of businesses that will exclusively be operated by Papua New Guineans. This is where I'm requiring initial investment of 10 million or under or annual sales of 10 million or underneath must be reserved for Papua New Guineans. Well, big blood business should still be open for, for not foreigners. The policy has gone through consultations and amendments will be made to the current Independent Promotion Authority Act to accommodate the SME policy. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. The president of the Star Mountains local level government has described the decision by Octeti Mining Limited to temporarily shut down the mine as a dangerous move. MTV's crew of reporter Sarah Alpong and cameraman Kons Kara caught up with the longtime LLG president in Kyunga town this morning. Borok Pitalok has served as the president of Star Mountains local level government for six terms now. That's 30 years at the top of the local government where the Octedi mine is located. He says he is worried about the impact the mine's temporary closure will have on the ongoing projects they have in their communities. Example, uh, uh, the mine side, along the mine side, they got a coral na a dam gate, na this area, minister they want the uh, mini center along all the kind, uh, you know, all the kind seek supply and, uh, and by staff long up. Instead of referring all come long, so we see that people are sick, refer all come long taboo bill. Now, I'm by apply to Kyunga, Balimo, Western Province will do the same. Peter Locke says the same can be said about the other LLGs in the Western Province because the bulk of the LLG's administrative budget is tied to OTML's revenue. I'll give him drug message in Minas How long the situation will be get back in proof? But one of my fear now, I will say, uh, if we come to West for more than two months, three months, big Peter Log's colleague, Seb Galeva, president of the Lake Murray LLG, shares the same view, but he says they started feeling the pinch of OTML's financial strife months ago. The administration component of internal revenue from the Western province is down. It started off last year. 
Yesterday, OTML's managing director and CEO, Peter Graham, said the company is facing two factors that are beyond their control the low water levels and the fall in copper and gold prices. He says while the weather has improved over the last couple of days, they will continue with the cost-cutting measures they have in place to ensure the company's continued viability. It's unfortunate that we really have to look to the longer term and make sure we position Octeti when we come out of the dry weather to be in a position to be a very viable business. Um, it's a good company. Um, it's going to be a, a successful, even more successful company. But we have to be positioned to deal with these low prices. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Parents of Jeremiah Yenu have filed a formal complaint with police homicide for investigations to begin into their son's plight. They have also called on the Papua New Guinea Defence Force hierarchy to conduct investigations and have those soldiers arrested. Jeremiah has still not come out of his coma, but his parents are hoping he will make it through. Distraught and in disbelief, Jeremiah's mother is still trying to come to terms with his son's condition. She says his son does not deserve to be put through this state. I'm innocent. Like, I'm not going to look at all the other friends who are singing. I'm going to look at all the other friends who are singing. Jeremiah's condition still remains the same, but his parents are confident of a full recovery. But what worries his father, Thomas Yinu, is the long road to rehabilitation and the cost involved. He says PNGDF must take ownership to assist the family through this. He recovers with them, I walk about, or it's like we've been So, the, like, uh, if you have to go, like, overseas to find some further treatment, like, I'm like, them. Nothing said like you have to go, you know, put these people up out, out in front, or the ones responsible and make sure they are responsible for his even if you have to go with a deputy responsible for his medical bills and so on and so forth. Yesterday, a formal complaint was lodged with the police homicide to take up Jeremiah's case. Justice for Jeremiah is what the family wants and will cooperate with all relevant authorities to achieve this. Yes, we have complained the police. It's a crime report. We have some crime report number. Maybe tomorrow we'll go and further further from the news. Arrest him all now. Lock him all up now. Calabus him all now. Finish him all the work all too. All in a fit lock him up army. Suppose all army, all by look out in Mipla, all civilian line. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Meanwhile, Defence Minister Dr Fabian Pock says those soldiers involved in the attack of Killer Killer students will be removed from the force. These individuals are in the custody of military police and will be handed over to police to allow for normal investigation processes. Minister Pock was responding during question time in Parliament today on the disciplinary action being taken against those involved. He condemned the actions of the soldiers and expressed sympathy for the parents of the students attacked, especially Jeremiah. It's not the whole organization that is at fault. It is the few people we have to identify, like what we're trying to do. So, as I said, I just assured you that these people who have caused this problem, commanders dealing with them, and we will make sure they're out of the force. That's what we will do to bring discipline to the force. And in news just then, the suspects were handed over to police this afternoon and are currently being interrogated. And in more news to come, a man arrested with large quantity of marijuana and Kena Securities officially listed on the Port Moresby Stock Exchange. Stay with us. Good to have you back with National MTV News. Kokopo police have nabbed a 25-year-old man for being in possession of a large quantity of marijuana. The suspect admitted to police on Wednesday that the large consignment of marijuana was transported to Kokopo in a commercial flight from Leh. Police say the suspect is one of many marijuana dealers scattered all over East New Britain province. The 25-year-old man from Garaina in the Morobe province was caught by the Kokopo task force team selling these marijuana packs, its estimated street value 8,000 kina. He was arrested 
charged and locked up at the Kokopo police cell. The suspect admitted to police that the cannabis was ferried into Robaul through a commercial flight from Leh, and it wasn't the first time. Last year we had a couple of uh, shipments coming in by uh, commercial airlines, but uh, we managed to um, uh, intercept that and we had some people arrested. A pack like this costs 50 kina on the streets in Kokopo and Robaul if the sellers are not busted. Much of it comes from the highlands region, from places like Kainantu. Yes, we have information of uh, uh, marijuana being brought in from uh, other provinces, especially from uh, Morobe, which could, have been, could be brought in from the highlands uh, by ship. A large quantity of marijuana that goes through security checks in Leh without being detected ends up here in East Newburton province. Random police checks at the Tokwa airport and Robaul Wharf have forced traffickers to come up with new methods of how to smuggle marijuana through security checks without being caught. About two weeks ago, two female passengers from Goroka, bound for West Newburton from Leh, were caught with cannabis strapped to their bodies. The East Newburton Drug Squad have been trying to curb the widespread use and transportation of marijuana between Leh and the New Guinea Islands region. But marijuana traffickers continue to smuggle in large quantities without being caught and the commencing of the New Britain Highway that will link East and West New Britain has already posed a new threat to the East New Britain Police. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. B Mobile Vodafone has been in the PNG mobile telecommunication industry for the last three years after the government acquired an 85% stake in it in 2007. During the launching of new products, the company CEO, Sundar Ramamurthy, told members of the late Chamber of Commerce that B-Mobile is a better alternative for, te for telecommunications. He said the company has moved beyond the challenges of the past. B-Mobile used a product launching to convince lay business houses registered to the late Chamber of Commerce to consider its services as an alternative. The company is seeking out lay Chamber of Commerce members who spend millions of kina in communications every year. In preparation for competition, government took B-Mobile out of telecom, partially privatised Yesterday, B-Mobile CEO Sundar Ramamurthy, while speaking during the launching, said the company can now link businesses from all four regions together at a cheaper price. He later said that they have improved their network coverage. You know, government was very supportive in the changes that we've implemented. And the results are there for everyone to see now. And so, you know, today every company has a challenge. Otherwise, you know, we don't wake up every day feeling like there's no challenge and you might not come to work. So, uh, I think The change in B-Mobile's network coverage comes after the national government secured an 85% stake and brought in Vodafone to build capacity in the struggling network provider. Yesterday's event shows yet again the company working to capture valuable market share and become relevant to the majority of Papua New Guineans. Colin Barilai, National MTV News, Leigh. The Kingdom of Denmark is looking forward to nurturing stronger business and people-to-people -people contact with Papua New Guinea. Denmark's ambassador-designate to PNG, Kasper Klinge, was in the country this week to present his credentials to Governor-General Grand Chief Sir Michael Ogio. Ambassador Klinge is extremely positive about the future relationship between the two countries. Ambassador Klinge, who is based out of Jakarta, Indonesia, presented his credentials to Governor-General Grand Chief Sir Michael Ogio earlier this week. He says there are many areas in which Denmark can assist Papua New Guinea in development. Um, and what do we want to achieve? Well, we want to boost the bilateral relations between two countries that are, uh, let's face it, quite far away from each other. There are thousands of kilometers between the capital of Hope Mosby and the capital of Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, but we think that uh, in a globalized world, uh, distance is not always uh, a hindrance for, for boosting relations. So that's one, the government-to-government -government cooperation, uh, where we would also be very happy to share experiences of, uh, of developing uh, clean technology, uh, renewable energies, basically providing regulatory framework experiences to a state like Papua New Guinea. The Kingdom of Denmark is a country that has been leading in clean energy development, and it's an area in which Papua New Guinea officials have flagged for cooperation. 
Um, but we think that there are still opportunities uh, to be explored here with new technology uh, that can help Papua New Guinea. So that's sort of the other leg of the reason uh, that we're here. Uh, government to government cooperation and, and business to business. The ambassador was accompanied by a small delegation of specialist Danish companies who are interested in investing in Papua New Guinea. Healthcare as another area where, where there could be opportunities. We have some of the, the larger global companies, for example, on working on, on diabetes treatment, insulin treatment, etc. So, but again, as I mentioned initially, uh, we're really here to see what would make sense for Papua New Guinea. Um, and if there are areas where we would be able to match up uh, competences with the demands or challenges, it would be um, our absolute pleasure to, to do so because we think it would be mutually beneficial. Neville Choi, National MTV News. Papua New Guinea's financial institution, Kina Securities Limited, has been officially listed on the Australian Security Exchange and the Port Moresby Stock Exchange. The initial public offering for Kina Security is approximately 97 million fully paid ordinary shares at a price of 2 Kina 8 Toya or 1 Australian dollar. Today, Kina Security was admitted to the official list of Port Moresby Stock Exchange and the Australian Security Exchange. Kina Security enters as the 22nd company to join the Port Moresby Stock Exchange, with shares already selling at 2 Kina 15. Wayne Golding, director of Kina Securities, said that this was another important step for Kina by giving its customers a broader variety of banking and investment services. The fourth pillar, which is Kina KSL, is very important because basically we are going to inject innovation and drive. And we want to service the public at large. So the big major accounts of three or four hundred million is not basically our place. Our place is to service the general public at large. And I think that's extremely important. Minister for Trade and Commerce and Industry Richard Maru, who is representing the Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, congratulated Kina Securities and said that it was important to have more investment companies. Thank you very much, Kina. I'm really, really pleased. Uh, we are right behind you. Uh, the government is right behind you in your movement. We are really, really proud that that local company has now grown and has taken this step. And certainly, uh, the government is right behind uh, your decision. Our challenge for you is to, to raise as much as you can, and we want to see your branches right throughout the country. Hmm. Bring that competition out and give it to them and service our people. That's the, that's the very clear message from, from government. Earlier this year, Kina acquired Maybank and says that it is keen on expanding its services even further to the rest of Papua New Guinea, be it in the area of investment or banking. Adelaide Sirax Kari, National MTV News. And now we check out the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3615 US dollars in the interbank market. And at Bank South Pacific, our Kina was trading at 0.354 US dollars, 0.4821 Australian dollars, 0.3183 Euro, and 43.45 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold closed the day lower, while coffee, cocoa, and copper closed the day higher. Palm oil, crude oil and copper all closed the day higher. And finally on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 121 points higher, the ASX closed at 38 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed at 40 points higher as well. Still ahead on National MTV News, Governor Nara calls on the national government to monitor construction of a four-lane highway and grievances of PNG power workers in Port Moresby, Lay and Yonkey. We'll give you all the details after this break. Stay with us. Good to have you back with the news. Morabe Governor Kelly Naru says the national government has to monitor the four-lane late Tanadzap Highway and assist the contractor to finish the job. The Morabe provincial government has been dealing with problems arising during the first phase of construction and reveal that the national government needs to intervene and address, and address compensation demands. Governor Nauru says construction of the four-lane highway needs to be closely monitored by the national government. The construction of the lane outs of four-lane highway is in progress. The work began in 2013 after the government secured a loan from China's Exim Bank. 
The deal with the Chinese bank meant a Chinese contractor would construct the four-lane highway. Uh, late to Natsap Highway, uh, my advice is uh, you don't just give work and expect them to perform miracles overnight. Morobe Governor Kelly Nauru says the national government must monitor and ensure that the project is being implemented by the China Railway International, the company tasked to do the job. A team from my government is also involved in uh, uh, assisting the, uh, the contractor and department of works in uh, addressing some of these problems, uh, like land on issues and uh, uh, removal of uh, settlements and houses along the road, uh, addressing the issue of compensation, and all these things. It's not just the bad weather that's stopping the progress of the 500 million Kina Lane out of four lane highway. It's the settlers, the landowner issue, and the demands for compensation that's demanding for more government attention. The Provincial Works Department has been tasked to monitor other national government funded roads in Lay City and the Morobe Province. That includes the 500 million Kina four lane highway. For Lay City Roads alone, over 400 million kina has been spent over the last five years from direct national government intervention that's improved the image of Lay City. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. PNG Power Workers in Lay and Yonki say they have not ruled out the possibility of a stop work within the next 36 hours. This follows the uncertainty over the renewal of the existing enterprise-based agreement which expires on Monday. It has them worried about their futures. The PNG Power Union has in the past demonstrated their ability to cause the government to listen to their demands. Today, the union branch in Lay told MTV they would support any move by Port Moresby that calls for the immediate renewal of the enterprise-based agreement. The agreement, which covers workers' salaries and benefits, expires on Monday. And according to union workers in Lay, progress towards renewal is slow and uncertain. PNG Power has been plagued with ongoing controversies. It has aging equipment, and while new equipment has been bought, critics have questioned the circumstances surrounding the procurements. What has drawn public anger are the ongoing power outages. And it's a problem that has not yet been resolved. Now there are revelations of what appears to be financial difficulties within the state-owned power company. Meanwhile, PNG Power workers at the Yonki Dam in Kainatu have indicated there's a strong possibility of a shutdown in the next 36 hours. Union representatives said it's all dependent on how the discussions turn out between the management and union executives in Port Moresby. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lee. And in news just in, the PNG Power Union is giving PPL management until 11 a.m. tomorrow to respond to their demands or else power will be shut off from Lei and Yonki. PNG Power employees through the Energy Workers Association here in Port Moresby today rejected a 20% pay rise suggestion by PNG Power management. In a letter to PPL Chief Executive Officer John Tangit, PNG Power employees say, said they are still waiting for the outcome of the enterprise agreement, an agreement between PPL and its employees on their work conditions. It's day four of this sit-in protest, and PNG Power employees say the PPL board and management have not given them a favorable response. In a six-page letter to CEO Tangit, the PNG Energy Workers Association on behalf of its PPL union members and employees have demanded answers from the management on the 2010 Enterprise Agreement and the 2012 EA Review Committee term of reference. But that is now been rejected by the unions because the compulsory sitting likely to be sitting tomorrow and uh, we also responded that it's now been rejected by the PNG energy workers representing the workforce. The rejection of the 20% increase by EWA is subjected to a claim that the executive director's salaries have exceeded over 2 million kina per annum and the recruitment of other expatriate salaries that are yet to be made known based on the enterprise agreement. The sit-in protest began on Monday following the 2 million kina salary claims on John Mangos. The employees said the money is sourced from within PPL's in-house cash flow and presented two sets of petitions containing a demand to both the board and management. 
the claim can be true, but I don't want to see it as it's a claim that's realistic. So given the restructures that the company has gone through over the last, uh, I'd say, five, six years ago, it's what we call a single line salary. There has been no work for PPL staff since Monday and that will continue tomorrow. The employees' demands are based on their outstanding entitlements and they have called on the board's deputy chairman, Larianda Gali, to respond to the petition that was presented to him on Monday. John Mangos as the executive director and John Tangit as the CEO, they should be held squarely and be responsible for whatever happens now. The sit-in protest has received support from PPL staff in other provinces. However, since the stop work began on Monday, it has not been raised during question time in Parliament sitting this week. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. Well, today is National Toothbrushing Day and hundreds have celebrated it by brushing their teeth. But the challenge still remains whether the message to brush teeth twice a day will be embraced. MTV's Quintin Alam has this report. School-aged children have been the main target for health officials to drive the oral health message of brushing the teeth twice a day. Since the launch of the National Tooth Brushing Day in 2012, statistics from Colgate Palmolive Limited, a company in the forefront of advocating oral health messages, has shown an increase in the number of participants brushing the teeth on this day. Where in 2012, we had just 10,000 participants. The following year, that doubled to just over 20,000. And last year, which you were all part of, we had 60,000 people across the country brushing their teeth. Proud to announce that today, there will be 161,000 people all brushing their teeth. But the question is whether people participating in toothbrushing on the National Toothbrushing Day continue daily and whether people understand the right procedures of brushing the teeth. According to a health educator, brushing your tongue is as important as your teeth. People are advised to brush the inside surface of its tooth, the chewing surface and behind its front tooth. So you brush down on the bottom, you brush upwards. On the inside, you brush out. You can also put your toothbrush like this and brush out, or you can brush one tip at a time by putting the head of your toothbrush against the front tip and brushing it out like that. Oral health diseases are still increasing. A World Health Organization survey shows that tooth decay prevalence for six-year-olds stands at 88%. In PNG, the Bright Smiles Bright Future campaign run by Colgate Palmolive has slowly improved dental awareness in the country. Quinten Alomp, National MTV News. Coming up in True Guy Sports, Prime Ministers 13 and weightlifting. Stay with us for all the details. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports over to Rugby League. The annual Prime Minister's Challenge between Papua New Guinea and Australia has been confirmed for September 26. The match will be played at the Sir John Guy Stadium under lights and atmosphere. PNG RFL Chairman Sandis Saka describes will be emotional. Everybody that was there will tell you. Actually, it was the first time, you know, for all of Papua New Guineans to go into a construction site because all of us had been looking at the stadium from the outside to have 15,000 people packed into an enclosed area and cheering for a crowd. Uh, the atmosphere was surreal. It's he said national selectors will be busy over the next few weeks as they pick teams for the various representative matches that will also coincide with the Prime Minister's 13th game. Should be a big game. Uh, we're expecting the Australians to send a you know good contingent up of the made up of players that will not be making the final eight of the inaugural premiership. So we'll know the makeup of the team uh, by the first week of September. 
The games include an under-16 match against New South Wales and a women's representative fixture between two teams selected from the National Confederates Championships that will be staged in early September. PM Staten weekend will actually be a gala weekend. Uh, while the Australian PM Staten will play the Papua New Guinea PM Staten, will also have junior games and women's rugby league games as Cat and Racer to the main event. So it's a full weekend of footy we expect on the 26th. Selectors will also be following the performances of players in the Digital Cup, which has its grand final scheduled for September the 6th. Players identified during the National Confederates Championships will also be considered for selection, with members of the SPPNG Hunters unavailable during this period. The decision now to uh, leave the PM set in for our uh, next crop of elite athletes in rugby league that are coming through are uh, basically our domestic players playing in our uh, through our affiliate leagues through the confederate and the national championships and uh, primarily our uh, number one national competition in the country the digital cup jeremy moggy national mtv sports the cancer foundation png will host its prestigious daffodil cup day challenge on friday 28th of august at the royal port mosby golf club the annual charity golf event was launched in Port Moresby today by Old Search Corporate Affairs Coordinator Ruth Waram in the presence of PNG Cancer Foundation CEO Daddy Tucker Jr. MTV Shansa Roya has this report. Um, once you, you are affected by the disease itself, um, treatment is very expensive. Um, so if we can help, you know, prevent one life through the awareness that... Oil Search has been sponsoring the competition every year to raise funds for cancer control in PNG. Throughout the month of August, the foundation will focus its awareness and fundraising activities to empower Papua New Guineans to challenge themselves to reduce their risk of cancer by making healthier life choices. The Port Moresby Daffodil Cup Golf Day has started in 2003 and the late Daffodil Cup in 2011. So far, overwhelming support from business communities has assisted Cancer Foundation PNG and the PNG Cancer Relief Society, Inc. Uh, to all the corporates and the community, uh, please join us in Daffodil Month and eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly and uh, protect your family. Don't smoke, don't chew and reduce your alcohol intake. A check of 25,000 kina was presented to the Cancer Foundation PNG by Oil Search. CEO Tadi Toka Jr. thanked Ms. Waram and Oil Search for being actively involved in the work of Cancer Foundation PNG. Appreciation to Oil Search once again. Uh, this is the 11th year uh, uh, that, uh, that they've been sponsoring this event uh, and of course thanking Ruth and her team for being actively involved in the work of the Cancer Foundation Papua New Guinea. Ms. Waram encourages all valuable supporters to take part in competition and raise as much money as possible for cancer awareness. We invite all our friends in the corporate sector uh, to please come along and support us again this year. Uh, feel the team, uh, contact the girls at the uh, foundation for the registration details on um, how to go about registering a team for the event and we look forward to seeing you all at the Royal Port Mosby Golf Club on Friday, August 28th. Yes. All funds raised from the late Daffodil Cup will enable the PNG Cancer Relief Society Inc. to help treat cancer patients at the Angau Memorial Hospital. We also sponsor a similar event in Lay for, uh, as you all are aware, the National Cancer Treatment Center is uh, based at the Engao uh, Memorial Hospital in Lay, so we do support an event um, in Lay as well. Cancer Foundation PNG will use all funds from this event to carry out its awareness around the country and work with partner organizations to improve cancer control across the country. The Port Mosby Daffodil Cup Golf Day will kickstart on Friday, August 28. Shane Saroya National, MTV News. The Papua New Guinea Weightlifting Association has put in place some of their plans for the future of their athletes in terms of training and competition. They will be competing in several events that include the upcoming Olympics and other weightlifting championships. After impressive performances by the lifters at the recently ended Pacific Games, weightlifting president Sir John Dawanikura in a press conference held yesterday spoke about some of their plans. In communications with Paul prior to his departure and since his, Paul Koffer, since his departure to uh, target the athletes for uh, uh, next year, next year's Olympics. And we also have, uh, uh, apart from uh, attending the Commonwealth uh, Weightlifting Championships in Pune in India uh, in October next year, we'll start off with uh, 
the Oceania Championships uh, in Fiji. Um, and part of that process is going to be looking at uh, uh, staging our national championships uh, also uh, next year. In September this year, Sir John and his compatriots will be attending the Commonwealth Annual General Assembly where new rules will be put in place in terms of the qualification process of weightlifting. September of this year, when Ovita and I attend the, Com uh, the Commonwealth uh, Games Federation Annual General Assembly, uh, there will be some new rules uh, being brought to the table, uh, especially in weightlifting, and uh, uh, it may not be as easy as uh, previous Commonwealth Games where we can send the maximum numbers. It may have to be subject to minimum qualification standards being set, uh, similar to the Olympic Games. A high-performance center will be built at the Sir Hubert Murray Stadium where the lifters can go to train. Yes, it's been uh, confirmed by the minister that uh, and. Uh, uh, so, so uh, we could that uh, weightlifting uh, high performance center will be at Hubert Murray Stadium. With the many plans that have been put into place for the code and the athletes, they will be placing a bid later this year to host the Commonwealth Weightlifting Championships. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. Well, True Guy Sports continues after these short messages. Stay tuned. <laughs> Two Kai Sports. Good to have you back with True Kai Sports. Over the years, respective national sporting bodies have been working with our proper strategies in place for their future development and growth of sports. The National Touch Federation draws its success from the World Cup and Pacific Games in creating strategies to further strengthen the code here in the country, forging partnerships and implementing a framework to govern its players and member associations are the first steps to building a stronger governing body. After completing two successful campaigns on a high note, PNG's National Touch Federation is now embarking on setting a strategic plan to further develop the code in the country. Among the focus areas that include equipping players and coaching staff with the necessary skills and knowledge of the game, the National Federation have implemented four short-term goals. The Federation have developed a framework of governance as the first goal to guide its member associations to work within, which up until now it has been working on an ad hoc basis. The framework will allow clubs and member associations to further develop and mold players from all levels of competition and have also developed a retainment strategy to keep all its elite players within the code. Earlier this year, the National Federation had begun its partnership with the International Federation of Touch Rugby and Touch Football Australia. We have set the challenge for ourselves. And firstly, to retain the rankings that we have. And secondly, to go up. And the goal we have set in Touch Football PNG is now working entirely toward that. That is that. In the World Cup for 2019, we want to be the world champions. If we, didn't, if we were not even in the rankings anyway, and came up to, to be the third in the world, we can confidently say that we can beat Australia and New Zealand to be the world champions in the sport of touch. And in snooker, 32 women have registered to compete in the Port Moresby Women's Handicap Snooker Challenge, which queued off last night. The challenge sees a different playing format where players will compete against those with the same handicap. Port Moresby Billiards and Snooker Association President says this will give all competitors an even playing field. Women's champion Gewa John will start with a handicap of 5 and 2014 PNG Women Player of the Year, Helen Samuel, with a handicap of 15. Games will queue off at 6 p.m. at the Laguna Hotel, Lamanis Q Club, Dragon's Den and the Aviat Club today. The finals will be held on Sunday at Lamana. Well, that ends True Guy Sports tonight. Coming up next, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Stay tuned for that. True Guy Sports.
taking a quick look at the weather forecast for tonight in southern region, mostly fine and windy in Port Moresby, Karama, Alatau and Popodeta. In Momase, sunny and fine tonight, rather it's fine weather tonight in Medang. In the New Guinea Islands, showers developing in Loringal and Kaviang. And lastly, in the Islands region, all centres to look forward to fine weather in the morning fog. Now before we go, a quick recap of our top stories again tonight. Prime Minister says the engagement of foreign consultants will cease. Also, soldiers involved in the attack of students removed from the force and suspect arrested with large quantity of marijuana in Kokopo. Well, that's how we wrap up the bulletin this Thursday. From the news team, I'm Tokana Hasavi Jr. You take care and have an enjoyable evening. Good night.